Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. By the way, today I'm reacting to a Jew goes to Mecca for Hajj. So, without wasting time, a Jew who goes to Hajj to Mecca, a Buddhist. Who says Allahu Akbar? Doesn't it sound strange to you? What about this? A Muslim who celebrates Christmas. I think you got what I mean. Imagine, imagine that you are in a dream. It's one of the weirdest dreams you have ever had. You're leaning against the wall with your knees drawn up to your belly. Someone is holding your hands tightly. You're both shaking. It's a little cold, but that's not the reason why you are shaking. This is something different. Your heart is beating very fast. You're trying to understand why. You look at the white walls. You see bullet traces all over them. Then you hear a shrill sound. The person who was holding your hands is now giving you a hug. From her smile, you realize that it's your mother. The sounds are getting louder. Loud sounds of gunfire. You don't know where the bullets hit. They pass by all around you. You hear sounds of explosions. The sounds are so loud that you are shaking. The windows are broken and the walls are shaking. You hold your mom's hand stronger and stronger. Your mother holds you in her arms. But you are still afraid. You don't know where to go. You are lost. You give your mother a hug. A strong hug. You feel like you are going to lose her the moment you let her go. You hug her like you never had before. She embraces you. It's like she's providing shelter and security like a strong fort. Your mom is praying. Your mom is crying. You can't stand it. Then you see your father. His eyes are wide open. You can read the fear in his eyes. And then suddenly the walls around you fall apart. You lose your mother's hand. It's like you're petrified and scared. At that point, it feels like you disappear. But at the same time, you stand right where you are. You can't move. This is war. But you're not even a soldier. There are sounds coming from children under the rubble. They scream because of the pain. Doesn't anyone hear you? Isn't anyone going to come and rescue you? You are all innocent. Who did this to you? Why did they do this to you? Don't they have a family? A mother or children? Are their families in this situation as well? Or are their families living in another part of the world in a happy way? Are you the only one in this world who is in such a situation? You wish that everything was a nightmare that none of all this had happened you wish that you were still holding your mom's warm hands and that you didn't feel the cold of the dead suddenly you open your eyes breathless and shocked as you are your mom draws the curtains back the room is filled with sunlight at that moment you feel incredibly relieved it's like your prayers are accepted. Everything was just a nightmare. Look, says your mom. Get ready, my dear. It's Christmas Eve. We are going to the church. You are startled. What is happening? Did she just say church? And then you realize that you are still dreaming. It's a dream in a dream. You woke up in another dream. You don't know why, but this time, you're a Christian child in a Christian family. You really don't get off, but it doesn't matter. You don't have the time to think. Your mom keeps saying that you have to hurry. You are getting ready. Together you walk to the church. You hear the loud sounds of the bells tolling. Some weird sounds creep you out a little. For your mom, everything is perfectly fine. You look confused at all those people. They are all in a rush. The preparations for tonight are going on fully. Because this night is very important, 
it has been a busy week because of Christmas, and now it's apparently Christmas Eve, the birthday of Jesus, they say. Finally, you go back home after a long afternoon. You walk into the living room, and guess what? A huge Christmas tree full with lights, decorations, and gift boxes under it. You get caught in your dream totally. The table is being set. You see the foods, traditional turkey and the sausages. It smells delicious. It's dark outside and your mom says that. Well, my dear, it's time to write a letter to Santa. Ask him whatever you want. This stuff is getting really annoying. Writing a letter to Santa? Is it some kind of joke or what? You have had enough and you want to wake up. Jingle bells, jingle bells. You hear those Christmas songs everywhere. It's getting annoying. You feel that you do not belong here. Wake up. Wake, wake up. up. You keep telling yourself to wake, wake up. up. And finally, you open your eyes to the reality. In the first dream, you were a child in a war in the Middle East. In the second dream, a Christian child in the West. You pinch yourself. Yes, you felt the pain. It's the first time you have done this after a dream. But luckily it worked for you. You're so relieved. You're not dreaming anymore. Now you're back to reality. But you know that those dreams are not just dreams. Those dreams are reality in some other parts of the world. But usually you forget this fact. Remember the first nightmare, living in fear, a life full of misery, and the second dream, that is the family of those who are responsible for that misery, happily preparing their Christmas celebration. I think it's strange that we are trying to emulate second dream, preparing for their holiday, and in the meantime, neglecting our brothers and sisters in persecution. While they are being tortured, we forget about them and indulge ourselves in the holidays, not pertaining to our customs. We try to be like them, notwithstanding the fact that they are responsible for the misery. How can it be that we act as if nothing bad has happened? How can we forget about them, get ready to party? How can we celebrate without feeling any guilt? Our actions are louder than our words. Yes, actions are louder than the words. And there are those moments when we don't seem to be the person that we say we are. For example, the near holidays. We see so many people who claim to be Muslims, but their actions reveal that they imitate Christians. What did we say? Actions are louder than the words. We can see that they are not what they look like at first. We just want to have a little fun. But don't we hear the child from the first nightmare screaming out his pain? My brother, my sister, if you are thinking about celebrating New Year's Eve, if you feel like you have to because you think it's a special day, then I want you to know that it is not accepted by the Muslim scholars. Because you claim to be a Muslim, and with the action of imitating people from other religions by celebrating their holidays, you're damaging the Muslim image. Your intentions might not be bad, because you just want to have a little fun, huh? But Islam does not accept this. Yes, my brother and sister, please invite me. Please invite me to the places you will go. This is an offer. Please invite me to the sins you will commit. Let's hang out until the first light of the morning. I will come with you if you can provide all these conditions. If there wasn't the reality of death, if we weren't forced to pay for all that we do now, if we are in this world only to drink and only to eat, if we hadn't got purpose and duties in this world, and if we didn't have to return to the Lord of the world in the end, then you're right. Don't stop. Let's go to the party together. But death is the most certain thing in this life. Everything is going to die. It's the start of a new life. And everything we do now 
and we did in the past is going to affect that new start. We are not in this world with no reason. Our lives have a purpose. We have duties. We have duties we must fulfill. And finally, we will reach our destiny. We are going to turn back to our Lord. Prophet Jesus will not be happy with the way his Ummah is right now. Maybe he will complain against his own Ummah on the Day of Judgment because of all those purposeless celebrations on this world. They are going to regret what they are doing. So, you my brother, you my sister, let's ask ourselves why are we imitating their superstitions? By imitating them, you're putting yourself into a harmful position in our dawa. Do not wait for waking up. Do not for waking up from this unawareness before it's too late. Because there's no way back. No way back on the day of judgment. Please don't. Whoever imitates another group of people is one of them. Says Rasulullah You don't even know if your time on earth is sufficient to be able to count back from 10. But it's certain that this world will find an end. It's certain that there will be a day of judgment. We will witness. You will witness. You are going to be judged of every single thing. And you will be searching there for one pair of black eyes. With your entire heart, you will be searching for that one pair of eyes. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, My ummah will be recognized at the day of judgment with the white trace of their ablutions. What if the pair of eyes who said these words do not recognize you at the day of judgment? Aren't you going to regret? Isn't your heart going to be filled with the pain of remorse? Is it worth it, my brother? Is it worth it, my sister? Is it worth it to give up on the paradise just for one stupid night? Oh, sons of this land, do not try to imitate Europeans. How can you reasonably trust in and follow the wise and invalid, worthless thought of Europe after the boundless tyranny and enmity it has shown you? No, no, you who imitate them in dissoluteness, you're not following them, but unconsciously joining the ranks and putting to death both yourselves and your brothers. A Jew who goes to Hajj to Mecca, a Buddhist who says Allahu Akbar, doesn't it sound strange to you? What about this? A Muslim who celebrates Christmas. I actually, personally, I actually think there is nothing wrong with someone saying something from another religion. I'm looking at it from a point of view, like I sit here, react to these videos that you guys suggest and there is some things that I strongly agree with and I would want to use them in my daily life. It's all about practicing something, right? There is something from someone that you're learning every other day and you'd love to incorporate it in your life. I really find nothing wrong with that. But I love the example of how the first dream was very horrible. While, they, while they're causing commotion in your world, they're enjoying all these sorts of holidays. I understand all that. But then I'm just thinking, what about people that marry out of their religion? Muslims that marry people that don't belong to the Islamic religion what happens to those because there is a guy i don't know his name i don't know if he's an athlete or what he actually celebrates christmas with his family but he's actually he practices islam so what about that is it wrong if you're not doing it for the bad deeds is it wrong for me to say let me fast with my fellow muslim friends because i want um to know how it feels like first, I want the benefits and I just want to pray five times. Maybe I can learn something from that. Would that be so wrong? Otherwise, love everything the video was standing for. But I would just love for someone to tell me if it's so wrong to borrow something from someone's religion and actually practice it. 
make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video